Mirror's Edge is a fascinating first-person platformer that both innovates and looks to the past. This is a modern-day iteration of an old-fashioned platformer in which you're meant to play and replay sequences of jumps, grabs, and slides until you get them perfect. But unlike its ancestors, Mirror's Edge is all about speed and momentum. And when you can connect your moves in a flawless stream of silky movement, it's really thrilling. Unfortunately, Mirror's Edge has a tendency to trip over its own feet, keeping you slipping and sliding blissfully along, only to have some design oddities bring you to a halt. Nevertheless, Mirror's Edge deserves a cautious look if you're into games that do their own thing, come hell or high water. What are you thinking about? A murderer? In Mirror's Edge, you play a runner named Faith. In the oppressed society of Mirror's Edge, runners are an underground network of couriers carrying sensitive information and documents from sender to receiver. The content of these messages is never clear, but it doesn't matter. The story's conflict instead revolves around Faith's sister, a cop who's framed for the murder of a mayoral candidate promising to bring change to the government. Soon, Faith is running for a different reason, to uncover the conspiracy at the heart of the murder and clear her sister's name. If anyone's heard anything, then you know who it'll be, Faith. And so you run, across rooftops, through train stations, and along walls. And as you run, you pick up speed and are able to string a number of moves together in rapid succession. You can slide under pipes, bound over railings, and leap across impossible looking chasms. The most obvious twist in Mirror's Edge, of course, is that you do all of this from a first person view, rather than with the typical third person camera you've come to expect. This has a way of immersing you as you speed towards your destination. <gasps> Mirror's Edge excels when you hit that snappy stride, and once you've found the best route through a tricky scenario, it's exhilarating to rush through it without a care. But this isn't going to happen the first time or even the fifth time you do it. You're going to need to experiment and hone your skills because a simple mistake will send you plunging down onto the street below, or at very least will interrupt your stride and bring you crashing back to Earth. You're expected to play each level multiple times to learn the routes that best propel you along. That's great the tenth time around, but the first time it's often an infuriating series of false starts, mistimed jumps, and full stops. If you need a hand, you can hold a button to activate runner vision, which turns the camera towards your destination, but it's an imprecise solution and it's not always very helpful. Another inconsistently helpful tool comes directly from the game's impressive art design. Mirror's Edge is a game of visual contrasts in which stark white environments contrast with primary colors. It looks beautiful and clean, and it's a great way of demonstrating both the bleakness of an authoritarian society and the unique manner in which a runner would see the world. Important ramps, doorways, ladders, and other points of interest are painted in a vibrant red, which is an important visual cue in some of the broader levels. However, this element too is delivered inconsistently. In some cases, the red hue may not fade in until you're close to the pole or vaulting point in question, and in some cases, Mirror's Edge expects you to figure things out on your own without any assistance whatsoever. For a game that relies on so much forward momentum, Mirror's Edge has a way of bringing the pace to a halt. In some cases, this is the very nature of trial and error gameplay. Fall, die, reload checkpoints. At other times, it's because you're faced with an intricate jumping puzzle. The puzzles aren't bad, but they're not particularly engaging either. You're more likely to feel relieved when you reach your destination rather than fulfilled. Ugh. Or you'll be zooming along only to find yourself in an elevator reading the news crawl on the wall's electronic panel while the level apparently loads in the background. In all of these cases, the game tears you from the story, reminding you time and time again that this is, after all, just a game. Armed enemies further complicate matters. It's best to run right past them when possible, but their bullets have a way of bringing you to your knees as you rush around looking for the best escape route. You can confront the threat head-on in some cases, but it requires careful planning and excellent timing. You can perform some close combat moves like jump kicks and punches, or disarm an enemy with a quick time event. If you want to hold on to the weapon, you can fire off a few shots, but the gunplay is loose and unfulfilling. If you can overlook the array of quirks long enough to find your stride, you can race and perform speedruns. Both of these modes feature online leaderboards, and both cater to the players most likely to get the most out of Mirror's Edge. But even if you're a more casual player, you're rarely going to struggle with the smooth controls, though they may take some getting used to. 
for what it's worth, the PlayStation 3 six-axis and DualShock 3 controllers offer a slightly more comfortable experience than the Xbox 361. While the visuals deserve kudos for their unusually crisp style, the audio deserves its own high praise. Sound effects like Fate's breathless heaves and plodding footsteps are authentic touches that heighten the sense of speed and tension. The voice acting is equally terrific, but it's the pulsing, driving soundtrack that impresses most. Its rhythmic flow augments Faith's most fluid runs, while subtle notes fill in the silence during downtimes. The superb musical journey culminates in a fantastic vocal track that plays during the game's final credits. Mirror's Edge is many things. Invigorating, infuriating, fulfilling, and confusing. It isn't for everybody, stumbling often for a game that holds velocity in such high esteem, but even with all its foibles and frustrations, it's bound to strike a chord. However, in a year overflowing with games of astounding quality and endless enjoyment, the edge of this particular mirror does look a bit dull.